Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day of waking us up clean and serving you. Yes. And I'm pretty sure, you know, in our addiction, you know, we had a lot of people, or I did, I'm speaking for me, I had a lot of people who just looked at Bridget, you know, in the natural. You know, drug addict, terrible mom, terrible wife, you know, terrible daughter, but they don't see what God sees in us. When they get here, they are broken, and it's a whole different lifestyle for these women. I mean, they're coming from a chaos, no structure, no authority. I remember being in that jail cell, hopeless, and just thinking that I was a junkie, and the sooner I died, the better off it was going to be for my family. And you said that the judges knew you because you came in and out of their courtroom so often, and yes. now they still know you, but for a different reason. Yeah, they knew me by name, and um, now they send people, girls here, to for us to help them. It's just a, a miracle. Whenever I was going to get um, more dope, I would always say, okay, this is the last time. it every day. It was an everyday thing that I had to have whenever I woke up from the time that I went to sleep. I had to So how many times per day? Uh probably about ten times a day. Ten times a day. Yeah. And I started off with me snorting it and then going to a needle. But whenever my eyes were closed and you know they said I was purple and blue and uh, it's like I could hear somebody calling out my name. I've used anything from pain pills to heroin, and I just got to the point to where I was, uh, I was just so miserable. I hated myself, I hated my life. You came from a good family, a good home. I did, absolutely. So what drew you to it to begin with? Um, what got me started, honestly, was the, the wrong crowd in school. Mm -hmm. Um, I started very young. By the time I was 12 years old, I was smoking pot. Can you guys tell me, um, just one or two of you, where you were and what you were doing when you felt that call to obedience? I was in county jail. Yeah. Yeah. And I knew, you know, it was the Lord telling me, you know, you need to be somewhere. Women come in here. What is the first thing you try to get across to them that will get them from where they were and where you were to where you are now? Um, basically, that there is hope. That it's not easy. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be all rainbows and butterflies. It's a very hard, long, drawn-out process. But so is the process that got us where we were. Does somebody else want to start? Oh, okay. Um, mine's Ephesians um, 5, 8, and it's, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. You can't describe this kind of pain. You, you, there's no words that are adequate. 